Hello and welcome. I'm Steve Clemens. I'm editor at large of The Hill. Thanks so much for joining us today for our virtual forum on infrastructure. We're calling it the Great Rebuild. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Nokia, for supporting today's conversations. Almost 90 years after the New Deal, America's on the cusp of another great rebuild. That's thanks to the newly passed infrastructure bill, which will deliver $550 billion of new federal investment over the next five years. Traditional infrastructure like roads, bridges, ports, and transit systems will get much needed support, but in a sign of our increasing reliance on technology, broadband connectivity is getting a boost as well. I mean, I would really say broadband connectivity is gonna be built into all of this. As America looks to lay the foundation for sustainable, modern infrastructure, what's the best approach to the allocation of these funds? Where should the priorities lie? And will this ambitious undertaking support inclusive economic gro uh, growth and job creation? We have an exciting lineup of speakers joining us for conversations on these topics. Before we begin, a few housekeeping notes. Please tweet us at The Hill Events, at The Hill Events, using the hashtag, hashtag The Hill Infrastructure. We're broadcasting live and we'll take your questions throughout the program. As with any live stream, don't throw your computer out if it goes wonky, just refresh the page and that should fix the problem. We begin at the local level today with our neighbor. Uh, let's find out how city leaders will prioritize and allocate funds that come their way. My first guest has pledged to spend $35 million to close Baltimore's digital divide and to expand public internet access. He is Mayor Brandon Scott, the new mayor of Baltimore. It's great to be with you again. Thanks for joining us. Look, I, I kind of look at this moment, I'm excited about this program because when you sort of look at the level of money we're going to put in um, infrastructure in cities around this country, but also rural areas, you know, we have an opportunity, perhaps once in a generation, even longer than a generation, given how long we've done, to begin looking at how do we make something that's smart, resilient, changing lives, and that creates recurring returns for an economy without always going to have to rebuild this. So I'm just wondering, Mayor, as you think about what's really smart and, you know, how you direct some of these infrastructure dollars that are coming in, what do you think is really important to get most right as you make these decisions? Yeah, and good afternoon, and thank, and thank you for having me. Listen, like many cities throughout the country, uh, Baltimore has what we call ignored or redlining and underfunded neighborhoods that lack access to basic amenities, right? Uh, groceries, hospitals, social and additional treatment, uh, jobs that pay liberal wages, but they also have the worst, bro worst roads, the worst bridges, the worst schools, the worst infrastructure, the worst housing situation. And this, and you said it quite right, uh, this uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill it is a once in a lifetime opportunity for our country and mayors and cities around the country to improve access to economic opportunities and vital resources for our residents, right? To supply traditionally disinvested in residents with a chance to participate in a modern economy by giving them what is going is, is a necessity like water access to high speed internet to be able to work in uh, the global economy that we have today is a big deal and that allows us to uh, take a active role and not just bridging into the divide but closing it once and for all when you think about how we can use these dollars to build on things like existing complete street strategy that we have here in baltimore uh, to revamp public uh, transit to revamp uh, plans for a new subway line here that will run through west baltimore to improve our bus system as we just announced a, a, a joint thing with USDOT and MDOT to secure $50 million for funding for East-West Transit Corridor. Investing in opportunity in communities that have been ignored will allow for our country uh, to uh, not just, as the president would say, build back, but build back better for now and in the future. Mayor, I appreciate your enthusiasm. This sounds great. And, and I'm, you know, as I said, a neighbor. I'm in, in Baltimore all the time, and I can't wait to see what the, the you know, the um, makeover is going to look like, you know, in some of these areas. But I, I, I want to say, you know, I have had the privilege of interviewing many, many mayors in my career. And among those were the former mayor of Chicago, uh, 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 Emmanuel, and, and Mayor Bloomberg in New York, Mayor Garcetti. And I would call them data mayors, that they were looking and watching, you know, how trucks were picking up trash and how to make it more efficient. They had sensors and feeds that were coming in, and they had these little, you know, notebooks with data points from everything looking at crime to what was happening with real estate values, what was happening with trash collection, rodents, etc. But it just it just made me think that part of this this, sto this story of infrastructure coming in is what opportunities are there from water to roads to bridges to you know digital connectivity in homes and schools 
schools, can can you begin to you know fashion uh, an awareness from data and sensors embedded in this infrastructure? Is that on the map for you? Well, listen, I am a, a data mayor, right? Huh. I, you know, as a as a city that that the city that fathered city stat, which is what most cities now use as the 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 the, uh, the, the the work building workplace of how to operate through data. Yes, is the answer, right? Because in order for us to build a 21st century infrastructure, especially when you think about transit, when you think about housing, when you think about schools, when you think about internet access, you have to be able to track those things so that we don't uh, make the mistakes of allowing us to get so far behind. When you know when things are failing, to put those things in place, to be able to have systems to help manage this infrastructure in a better way so that you know when you should be going back and resurfacing what road at what time, doing what bridge at what time, dealing with what system at what time. All of that plays a part for me uh, in how we're going to do this. Everything that I do as mayor of Baltimore is done through a lens of equity and it's going to be driven by data. How do you um, approach this digital divide question? I know you've set aside money. A lot of people you know, are, are, are trained in a way by media thinking, oh, there's a rural-urban divide. Well, there's an urban-urban divide uh, in digital connectivity uh, for folks. And, and in many of our cities around the country, we have a significant number of our fellow citizens you know, and their children who cannot uh, get online or who have a rough time getting online. What does full digital connectivity and ending the digital divide in Baltimore mean to you? It means very simply that everybody in every neighborhood in our city has access to a broadband internet, right? And that means for us in Baltimore, a city that owns its own conduit system, that we're going to be putting the groundwork into building the opportunity for us to help to provide that. A part of this uh, $35 million that we announced uh, last week, which we're using our American Rescue dollars to start, this is a down payment on into the digital divide here in Baltimore, will go to uh, bringing public Wi-Fi to 10 neighborhoods in West Baltimore, like Penn North, uh, in areas that have been ignored for so long and that we know the divide is so deep. Uh, we're going to focus there first and then build out from there because as I said in my opening remarks, internet is going to grow to be a utility and a necessity in this country like water, like gas and electric. Well, I'm telling my, uh, my audience here that, you know, I know uh, who's coming after this interview. It's, it's Nuria Fernandez, who's administrator of the Federal Transit Administration. It's a great interview. We talk a little bit about Baltimore. We talk a little bit about Secretary Pete Buttigieg visiting with you recently. Yes. So what was that about? What did, you, what did you accomplish? Or, you know, was it just a picture op for him? Oh, no, ne never, never a pic picture out with my good friend, uh, Secretary Pete Buttigieg. It was about uh, the East-West Transit Bus Corridor, mm -hmm. and it's a $50 million in funding that will help residents get to jobs and opportunities, help young people get to school from East and West Baltimore in a faster way. I know about that personally. I used to get up at 5.30 every morning and be on the bus at 6 to get to school at about 8 o'clock on the other side of town. This will transfer form opportunities for families so that people can spend more time with their families, so they can get to work at some of our growing businesses on time to help our businesses in our communities. This is not a photo op, and we look forward to uh, doing more things. It's about real-time signage, 88 upgrades, bus stop enhancement, signals, dedicated bus lanes, getting these people to work and to and from faster, making us a more sustainable city, decreasing our reliance on cars as we work to make our city a 21st century, and we look forward to celebrating more things like getting rid of the highway to nowhere uh, with Secretary Buttigieg and bringing back the red line because this is a once in a lifetime thing, and we know that we have a real partner in Secretary Buttigieg, in President Biden, and Vice President Harris. Mayor Scott, before I take an, a question from the audience for you, I want to just ask, you know, finally. Um, you know, kind of complicated question because, you know, I, I happen to love Baltimore and going to Baltimore. Baltimore's got a rich history, but it's complicated. And there have been many um, of your predecessors have not succeeded in getting Baltimore to where it needed to be. And, you know, I'm listening to you and I'm, I'm very impressed, but I'm just wondering to what degree you have to deal with the infrastructure of talent in that city so that they understand 
uh, the digital world, that they become data staff, that they understand the importance of not just building a road, but building a road with sensors, not just building water system, but water systems that understand. How much of that literacy exists within uh, the public policy establishment within your city? Yeah, what I would say to you is the talent has always been here. What we have lacked is the leadership to think in a new way. Uh, we have to, and this is my job, to break away with the, the ways of thinking of the past, right? Uh, I'm going to be a mayor that's governing, not to just get reelected in three years, but governing so that who's sitting here having this interview with your, your, your folks person that will follow you in 15 years and say that this is the things that we put in place in 2021 that allow us to be successful today. Governing for now and the future at the same time. Something that doesn't always happen, but that's what was needed. It's about the leadership to go back and undo the wrongs of how Baltimore was investing his money and ignoring mm -hmm. uh, a black and brown neighbors and lifting those people up. The talent has never been the problem. It's about the vision, the focus, and the leadership. Great. We have a question for you, Mayor, from Jess Heck. Jess? Good afternoon. My name is Jess Heck, and I'm the Government Relations Manager for WorkRise. WorkRise is a workforce management solution for the skilled trades. Harnessing technology, we create efficiencies for workers throughout their work experience, including staffing, training, compliance, payments, and more. My question for the panel today is, given there's already a shortage of skilled trades workers, how is the federal government going to ensure there are enough workers to complete these upcoming infrastructure projects? Thank you. Well, you're not federal government, you're, state, you're, you're city government, but I mean, I think it raises a very interesting question. We're at 4.2% unemployment in this country. A lot of people have left the workforce, but you know, when this money comes in, are we gonna have enough people to do all the build out? Yeah, I think that what we, what we did in knowing that and what we've done is try to get ahead of that, right? Uh, we're also uh, making our biggest investment in the history of our city in workforce development and training, right? We're doing a big program, over $30 million directly from our American Rescue Jobs of going towards workforce training. And it's about building up the, the folks that are working in trades. It's about working with our labor unions who are looking to build more training programs here in our city and working with them. We have everyone working together on this issue because we want to make sure that our residents here here in Baltimore, especially those who had jobs that are never coming back, are now be able to be retooled and retrained for these things that are coming. Focusing in on making sure that those are even returning home from prison will now be able to have the opportunity to work on these infrastructure projects in their neighborhoods because that's of the Baltimore that my grandparents moved to from the rural south that allowed me to be in the position that I am in today. And we have the opportunity through this bill to provide that opportunity for families now. Well, I really appreciate your time. I want to tell our audience that, you know, Mayor Brandon Scott was elected unanimously by the city council members, his colleagues. And, and so, you know, Baltimore is on the move. So we'll be back. Love to have you back here, here about the progress. So Mayor Brandon Scott, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much.